multitude of things. All right, let's get gone. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready? John? She's doing gladiators. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I didn't know that was the name. Oh. I think it's My John. Knees are a bit long for this table. I can't remember. I told you about uh, that. You got long knees. My thighs, I guess. Like Legs. my femur. What do, what do long knees look like? My femur is long because there's a, there's a desk underneath the table. It's um, it's long thighs, short shins. No, I no, mine are in proportion. No, because your knees are long. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. I got a fly. That's. Oh, that would be my worst. I'm gonna play with me, but. Three. Do you know what happened yesterday? Two. One. <laughs> no, go. Yeah, you go. No, we'll say it on no, the do your, No, do we'll your say it on the No, do it now. <laughs> I was at work. And then um, I, like, I had just, I think maybe got a drink. Anyway, I sat back down, put on my, you know, computer to say I'm ready to take another call. And I had my headphones on. And then all I heard was this, you know, where you can hear something like, like, let's say it's a mozzie or whatever, but this sounded like it was a dragonfly or it's like, <laughs> right, right there, but quite loud. I <laughs> freaked. I jumped up in a split second. I was out the door. I left my computer on. So cool could have come through, whatever. I screamed because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what's that? And then Debbie goes, and then he's just casually whatever in the back with Benj. And then he comes through and I said, babe, babe, help me. <laughs> babe, help. There's something in my room. <laughs> anyway, what do you say? I said it was me. It was Dev. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> but, all right. So our dog, right? Our dog got um, one of the kids uh, watches and was in the mouth. And I was like, no, 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 and as soon as I started doing that, all I hear is the door swing wide open and this massive just gallop through the house. And I was like, what are you what are you doing? And Emma's screaming at me. She goes, Check, there's something in the there's something in the room. And I said, What does it sound like? She goes, It's just like this na na na. Like it sounded like um I said it's like na 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 Yeah, and I was like and I looked at her, I go, that was me. Legit, like, like my flight or fight response was on, and I was shaking, like my hands were like shaking. I was my heart, ba- my heartbeat was up, and I was scared to go back in the room. Oh my gosh, that's that is that's brilliant. <laughs> she I'm didn't so believe, she didn't that. believe me, she didn't believe me, and then she was like, um, I go, what do you? She goes, what do you mean? What do you mean? What does it sound? I go, babe, does it sound like this? And I went, no, 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 and she goes, yes, yes, and I was like, oh my gosh. crying laughing wow it's just because my response was so full-on and it was like split second and i like left i think there could have been someone on the phone for all i care i was out of there (laughs) i think Um. of three years of doing this podcast all the times you've interrupted accounting that was the most worth it yeah that was a great story i appreciate that Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. The B Side Word. Welcome back to another B Side Word podcast. Hey. I am your holistic detective, Devin. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, here right. with Emma. Hi. And I'm here with Alexander. Oh, hi. Holistic. Holistic detective. Very curious. What does a holistic detective do? I, I just started watching um, this uh, new series called Dirk Gently. Mm-hmm. Dirk Gently. Okay. Actually, uh, is I that thought you were watching um, Dirk Gently. Yeah. Mysterious. It's, children. it's ringing a bell. Mysterious people. Un, un, no, I finished that one. What's that one called? Unfortunate events. Oh yeah. That's oh. Uh, that's Illuminati based, I reckon. Anyways, back to this Dirk the seri- Gently. The series of unfortunate events. Lemony Snicker. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a mini series. A mini. It's a small series. Three seasons. And they've got the Illuminati always. They've always Where? got the Illuminati Ooh. on the intro. 
And even, were, the, even the symbols. They were my pre-Harry Potter books. Oh, no way. Like the, they were the first books I got into. And then it was Harry Potter. Aiden's just been introduced to one through school, so it's probably the same thing. It's actually, it's actually a good series. Anyways, back to this holistic detective. Mm. Uh, can I just say, when yeah. you said Lemony Snicket, <laughs> can I, I'll give you one guess to say what I think of. What I what what popped up in my head? Lemon tart, Jiminy Cricket. Yes, Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> well, I was way off. Yes, oh, I knew way, someone way would get it. <laughs> right, lemon what did tart. you say? Lemon tart. Lemon, lemon tart. tart. I was way off. <laughs> Look, Dev, you can you can be married to her for as long as you want. <laughs> I still know her better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Dirk Gently. Dirk Gently, holistic detective. He's not like a he's not like a normal detective like myself. I don't look for clues. I just enter a scene and I look for the connections. Okay. And it comes naturally. Is that what Dirk does? I, I don't know what he does. I just started the series and I'm intrigued. Is it a person <laughs> that's called Dirk? Yeah. Oh. He's intrigued me. <laughs> so you are now you've taken on his persona, Mr. Holistic Detective Dan. Not his persona, but I liked his approach to stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all about the process. I actually don't know. So th- that's the whole process. So he gets he um, <laughs> picks up a uh, a case, mm-hmm. and he does nothing, and things happen, and he sees the connection, mm-hmm. and nothing is a connection. It's really, it's really. I don't know what to expect, but it seems like nothing's happening so far. Might might have to add that one to the list. Did you hear about this race that that wants to happen between um, Usain Bolt and who and and uh, an NFL player? What? No. NFL players quick over forty yards. An Aussie one? No, NFL. Oh, NFL. So he's quick over forty yards, and um, Usain Bolt's quick over a hundred. So they made it seventy meters, Mm -hmm. which which is weird because I don't. Like, I don't know how that'll work out. I don't know. It's a weird one. I don't know why Usain Bolt Oof. would do that. Wait, has he said yes? I mean, 40 oh, yeah, yards yes. is only 43, 13, 13, 14, maybe, a, may, yeah, like 13 meters. Oh, really? Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. Well, 40 yards is... Oh, no, sorry, yards. I was thinking feet. Yeah. 40 feet. <laughs> I was like... 40, 40 no, yards. Usain said... So that's, that's going to be about, what, 35 metres? Yeah. Give or take. So that's halfway. So Bolt was probably going to smash him. He goes, if you keep talking, I might just show up to Tyreek. Because... Um, oh, so if um, Usain Bolt wins, he gets the ring, uh, the NFL ring. And if the other bloke wins, uh-huh. he gets a gold medal. I like that. Yeah. I do like that. I think... Because I guess with those things, like rings and gold medals, once you've got it, they, they've they lost all their value. Have they? You know what I mean? In terms of... Not in terms of like... Their value is to be sold or something, but for you, it's just a memory. Mm. Yeah. But your memory's not really the medal, is it? Your memory's like the event and do, like the medal's just a signifier of that. Because like, um, what's his name? Um, oh wow, my brain's gone completely blank. Boston Celtics, Bill Russell. Mm-hmm. He's auctioning off all of his championship stuff, like all of his rings and all that. Like, he's really? Like whatever. What? Yeah. Wow. Like, that, this happens a lot. You see a lot of... Well, I know in basketball, there's a lot of NBA players, historic ones, will auction off their stuff. Like, not because they need the money. They're just... There's someone else... To help charity. To it. Like, it's worth it's worth more. Sometimes charity, sometimes just to get rid of it. I oh. guess. Really? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, I think... I think to them, it just... Yeah. Like, I don't know if the ring necessarily... It's a show-off item, maybe? Mm-hmm. But to you, do you re- do you think you'd really look at it and be like, yeah? Or you'd just be like, oh, okay, it's a ring. Uh, I, if it was my first if, one, okay, I'd be like, yeah. Let's go back, actually. If it was my 20th, I'd be like, yeah. Do you trophies from when you were a kid? Yes. Did you get yes. trophies when you were a kid? They're, yes. right, they're hanging right behind us. Your trophies? 
Look. Whose trophies are those? I have mine too. <laughs> Whose are those though? They're mine. Those ones are devs. But I never I never put them up. You're right, Alexander. I never put them up. Um, I said... Let's sum up the Emma, top. <laughs> Emma actually said... Keep them. Yeah, keep them because I said, oh, chuck them out. Yeah. And Emma's like, no, keep, keep them, keep them. the kids will want to see what their dad got trophies and I was for. Like, I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was more like, oh, you, actually, you're right. I don't like keeping trophies. Yeah. I don't even know where mine are. Yeah. I haven't got a clue. I made right you keep them. Yeah. But Emma I made, made you me. keep them for the kids because it's nice for them to go, oh, oh, what's this one that dad did well in? Or what's this one? Do you know what I mean? Mm. 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 But when they're older, we can get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, talking, weird, about, talking about rings. Are you giving me one? No. Talking about rings, uh, I saw Luke Longley's uh, three uh, championship rings. Who's Luke Longley? The center for the Chicago Bulls during um, Jordan's era where they won the second three-peat. And what, so what's happened? Um, I didn't realize this. I didn't understand. I <laughs> didn't realize that Luke Longley w- was a major part of that three-peat. But okay. during the last dance, he wasn't featured. Oh, at all. At all. And then I did like I, I like when he came up on my feed, I was like, Luke Long, I haven't seen him in ages. What's he up to? Hmm. Right? He's living in Western Australia on a country, like on this farm, and he's got a beach Is and he he's Aussie? just like, Yeah, he's Aussie. Oh, okay. And I remember watching him and I was thinking, That's Luke Long. This is this is the Australian pioneer into the NBA. This is the guy that started it all for the for uh, Australians wanting to go into the NBA or thinking mm. they could go into the NBA, right? But I forgot how much of a major part he was. Mm. And then, like, thinking back to The Last Dance, I was like, oh, Luke Longley hasn't featured. Was he that much of a big deal or only because he was a you starting, were Aussie and he was he a was starting a... centre for the Chicago Bulls? Oh. That's, a pretty, that's a pretty big impact mm. to... To be the starting, and, and don't get me wrong. He said that if he wasn't seven two and huge, seven two. Yeah, if he wasn't seven two and huge, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be on that team. Yeah, he wouldn't. He understands, the, but he had soft hands. <laughs> he had the basketball IQ. Like he had, he was a good passer. He was a really, really good passer, and he was a very good. Um, I thought you meant uh, actual soft hands. What? I was like, like well, how never, do you know this? I've never felt his hands. Um. um <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know him, but I kind of do recognize the name a little bit. Well, I just want to uh, play this audio, what Michael said at the end of the documentary. All right, go. It's room for that. You're a busy man, Michael. Why did you agree to take time out of your schedule to do this interview for Luke? He matters to me. Yeah, you know, he does matter to me and his story needs to be told. Sure, I mean, there's some, some good and there's some bad, but that's all a part of life, you know? You're gonna have friends that you have good and bad things about, you know, but we went through the trenches. We, we, we shared a lot, you know? We competed together and, and, you know, I would take him any day of the week, if, you know, if I had to go through a competition again. If you ask me to do it all over again, there's no way I would leave Luke Longley off my team. No way possible, because he mattered. You know, he, he had an impact on me. Well, go MJ. He made me better as a player. You know, as a person. Wow. Wow, we. That's something. Oh, no. and then he's in his speedos. Yeah, and then he ha- goes on to his private beach. Okay, so uh, I, but I still need a little bit more context. So was this a sort of a documentary that so, someone did on Luke or you, he was you, putting out? Oh, so I'll put it this way. Do you understand the Michael Jordan mindset? Uh, it's all about him. No, no, what do you mean? No, it's not all about him. It's all about winning. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, and there's this book. He's got his, uh, he, one of his uh, coaches released a book called Relentless. Mm-hmm. And it's about having a certain mindset to do anything it takes to win at all costs. Being a cleaner. Mm-hmm. But cleaner, being a cleaner. Mm-hmm. Not just the uh, finisher. Mm-hmm. What is it? The finisher and there's another one. I can't remember the other. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember the other two. And then you have Luke Longley, who's a gentle giant that's totally empathetic, that gets uh, pretty much falls into basketball because he's huge. 
right? But he's he's hasn't got that killer instinct, and he's he's totally the opposite to MJ. But still achieves st- stuff. Mm-hmm. So like it shows like these parallel guys, right? One got this killer instinct, and this other one's got this empathetic, uh, a sympathetic, emotionally aware person. That's huge, right? Uh, seven two. I don't know how much. Five hundred pounds? No, I'm just kidding. But like, he's huge, right? Mm-hmm. And they're total opposites. Mm-hmm. And somehow they, it worked. Yeah. And they showed how Michael Jordan would push Luke, and Luke would know how to respond to that kind of stuff. It was just weird because that's he only like loved he only took basketball serious when he was third or second year college second or third year college because he was that big he could just he did enough to like i'm big like you know anyway so i just wanted to bring up luke luke longley because um it, it takes all sorts for a team to be successful mm-hmm. And all the stuff he did in the background as a teammate for other people, like he opened up his house for the Chicago Bulls to come and visit. And like most of the Chicago Bulls would go to Luke Longley's house, right? Except for MJ. MJ was like the leader, so he'd be the lone wolf. He'd always be out there doing his own thing and he's the leader and he's all this stuff. Well, well, Luke Longley is all about community and him being a team and feeling that emotion and like, you know, let's let's... Anyways, it was just, yeah, it was just, uh, I I don't know. That I think my, like, I saw a lot of what Luke was doing in my approach to way, the way that I approach life. Hmm. And that's why I think there was a bit of... Um, but I still don't understand. Whose documentary was this? That was Luke Longley's one. Was it from his point of view or has someone made it about him? No, his point of view. And was he upset or something? I think he was a little bit upset because he was a major part. And like they showed him watching the documentary, The Last Dance, with his uh, daughter. And he'd be like, oh, there I am. That's the fourth time you saw me on the six-part documentary. That's, oh, there I am. Look, another. So was he saying, oh, I wish I should have been a bigger part of the, the thing. And then I mean, he, and then someone reached out to MJ and MJ did an interview saying you'd, he, that he does matter. Yeah, like Phil Jackson also said stuff and Steve Kerr because uh, Pippen, I didn't know, but him and Pippen, Luke Longley and Pippen, got along. Like really, really got along. They, they're they both jokers and like I didn't see all this stuff you don't know. You don't know about the dynamics between players. Uh, I never would have thought that Pippen and him would be buddies. Close. Close yeah. buddies. And then you see Pippen get interviewed and he's like, like Luke is such... A great person. Yeah. He's such a great person. There's like, he's this gentle guy that likes to joke around, doesn't take life too serious, but gets his job done. He rocks up to work, he gets his work done, and like, it's just. So. So then when Luke was getting, when heard what, what MJ had to say, he was like, oh, like that touched him. Like that I, I meant think a lot so. to him. I think so. He just wanted to be recognized. I, yeah. Anyways, little Nas X. Lil Nas X, what's he done? He hasn't done anything. Okay. But Michael Rapport, Rapport, Rapapore, Rapapore. He, uh, who's that? He's a comedian. He actor? is in the episode of Friends when Phoebe dates a police officer who shoots the bird when she finds his badge. That guy, she finds his guy? badge he's in the couch. He's pretty famous. I kind of He's the dad in face. Atypical. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's right. where I recognize his face from then. Let's let's hear what he says. Lil Nas X, the rapper, put out a tweet saying, after I dropped the album, I'm ending my gay era and going back to my cowboy hat era. I responded unsolicited, of course, by saying musically, both eras are trash. Because they are. People went crazy. You're homophobic. How could you say that? That's homophobic. And I said, what the fuck are you talking about? Phobe means fear. Phobe means scared. I'm treating him and his music equally. And if I'm treating him and his music equally as anybody should, I'm saying his music is doo-doo. He's a gimmick rapper like Millie Vanilli. 
or uh, Rico Suave or Vanilla Ice, okay? You got a problem with that. You got a problem with that. You don't want to judge him equally, then you're a phobe. What are you scared of? So I stand by what I said. Musically, Lil Nas X is garbage. Garbage. <laughs> 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 right. So whether you whether you like Little Nas X's music or yeah yeah or nay, right? Mm. Are there people that are protected by their community, even though their 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 stuff is sh- shite? Of course, because that pe- some people are going to like what they like. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Like, uh, like he said, he gave his opinion on Little Nas Little Nas X's music. Mm-hmm. And the people that came up, that fired back at him, were saying that he was homophobic, and he he didn't bring anything up about his um, sexuality. He just well, said he did. That, he said that the gay era is shite, and the other era is shite. So he did actually say specifically gay. <laughs> no, no, but he wasn't. No, he's saying. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, did we hear the same thing? Yeah, like he said. Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, trying saying... to, I'm trying to remember the timeline of what he said. Didn't so Lil Nas X said after he's this, he's going to go back to the cowboy era. Yeah. yeah. Era and Michael Rappaport said both eras both. are showing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, then you, he's like, even if he didn't mean but it, he didn't. People he didn't gonna... bring it up though. Who? Michael Rappaport didn't bring it up. He said, he was oh, just no, he saying didn't bring it up in the first of, place. He, just, he was just saying, your music is bad. That was yes. all he was saying. Yes, he that's wasn't all he was saying. That's all he meant. About him. Yeah, but what did you uh, no, hear? 100%. What did you hear? No, I heard that, but I'm trying to get yeah, from yeah, the perspective yeah. of the fans. Yeah, yeah. tell me what yeah. you hear. Tell me what so you hear. So from their perspective, he's like, if they're gay and he said, well, both were bad, they're going, what? The gay era is bad. I'm going to respond to that. What are they the responding cowboy to? ear is bad. I'll respond to that. They're, they're just hearing what yeah. they want to hear, right? So, yeah. So, are there people that are protected by... Protected by people... What am I... By communities, even though they're... Like, it's truth? Well, it's not truth. But what is opinion. truth? Yeah, it's not true. Like, his opinion. truth. Like if he is saying, but he's not saying anything to a specific community. He's just saying his music is his his opinion so, is his music is crap. So okay, this is where I think these are interesting conversations to be had about the way we express things more than it is mm-hmm. about what your opinions are. And the reason I say this is because if you. When you think about how you say things, you've got to think about it literally, not because you need to communicate literally, but because people will take your word literally. So it's Mm -hmm. not about you, it's about how people receive you. So when someone says, is talking about music, so talking about Lil Nas X, and you go, yeah, well, that music's trash. You're speaking from an objective point of view, not a subjective point of view. If you said, in my opinion, that music's trash, no one can say anything because you're saying it's in your opinion. But if you just say that music is trash, people can go, "Well, it's sold millions and millions, so obviously yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. trash." Like it's it's and that- stupid to harp on, but that subtle difference makes a difference in how people take what you say. So when when you say that, are you saying that people will jump to conclusions? Yeah, or- yeah, because they hear what right. they want to hear. They read through the they they see what they want to see. And also, it doesn't matter what it is, everyone's going to have a fan base. And if you go against their, you know, idol or whoever they look up to, you're always going to get keyboard warriors hitting back. Yeah, that's fine to say to stay, uh, like, to... Yeah, that's fine. I get that. Like, if someone says to me that Usher's music stuff, I'll argue that his music isn't, st- uh, like, crash, right? I get that point. But then to say that he's homophobic, that's not standing up for his music anymore. That's saying that that's a whole different conversation. You know what I mean? I get you. I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm just, I'm trying to think, why would they do that? And I'm thinking the only reason they would is because he then said, well, th- both eras were trash. Like yeah. he responded specifically about that era, if you know what I mean. 
But that's even though see, to Lil Nas me, X brought the, it up initially. That response that he gave, if anything, is not responding to that era because he's saying in totality, regardless yeah. of what you try to paint it as, you're trash. Yeah, that's what he means, and that's what we can see it as. But I some th- people I might think, not. I think he said garbage. And garbage. That's what he said. Garbage. garbage. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing is with the way that he responded as well, and but Michael Rapaport knows what he's doing. He yeah. is a troll. Like, yeah, he he's says things in a troll. specific yeah. way to get responses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you got to also take that into account. Not us, but people when they try and go at him, it's like you're doing what he wants you to do. Mm. It makes him more famous. True story. Both, I think, because like Little Nas X, you you be, you said it for a few podcast, uh, like few episodes, that he's a um, professional troll as well. Oh, he is. He so, is a professional troll, but I think yeah. that's where like the idea of saying his music in totality is trash is not hom- homophobic. Mainly for the point that when he debuted Old Town Road, which went viral, no one knew he was gay. Mm-hmm. Like it came out after that, mm-hmm. so it's not even. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. even paint it across the spectrum of all of his music. But yeah, Lil Nas X, after that old time road, he was he was a troll through Twitter at that point already. But it was after that fame that he became a troll through everything he does. Like his music was even troll. Right. Um, in terms of like his music videos are definitely done to get a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's Especially I don't that know. If, one. I think I've talked about this before. I don't know if you know. I can't remember the details, but it, how he got into the music industry, like this, wasn't an accident that he went viral. Like he tried to go. He spent his time in creating music specifically to get react, like to get attention. Like he figured out in a in a way, he figured out the formula of viral music. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. His stuff isn't going to be, I mean, I don't think we're going to be like, it's not going to be lifelong, is it? They're not, it's not really classics. Who is a, cla- a nowadays classic? We, Bruno. We don't know. No, not Bruno. For me, anyway. Oh, no, I mean, Bruno, but like, not, what's the, what era are you talking about? Now. Bruno? But Bruno's not this era. So you shouldn't. Well, he is like the past 10 years, let's say. When did Bruno first come up with his album? Mm, I think Where I was we... already in Australia. Bruno, I, I, yeah, maybe his last 10 years. So I'm trying to think. I don't think I knew of Bruno when I was in Iceland. And I left Iceland in 2010. No, have a look. Because we went to his concert. Yeah. I can't like remember. I'm trying to think. Ago. <laughs> have a look. Anyways. Uh, are you I trying think, to say um, he was earlier than 10 years ago? I think so. Can I, can I uh, also just talk about your man crush? Because I was offended I wasn't on the episode when you talked about this. <laughs> I've been trying to get Emma to do this for me, and she won't. What? But 2010, doo-wops and hooligans. Uh, see? Um, there we go. Um, what are they called again? The the group. I've forgotten the name of them. Death Son- uh, Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic. Yeah. It's two people. That song that came out, it's two people. It's not one. Yeah. It's not a Bruno song. It's a Bruno and Anderson Pack. Yes. Yeah. And if yes. you like that music, please go back and listen to Anderson Pack's music. Because yes. I've been trying to get him to listen to him listening. for a long time. No, I have. I did. I have been. Okay. I did. Mm. He's very good. <laughs> okay. He's very good. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I did. I did. I did. I did. I, like I when recommend. the very first Silk Sonic song came out. His Tiny Desk concert. Always love that one. It's a great oh. listen. <sighs> it's just my man crush. Who? Anderson Pack. Oh, Anderson oh that's, Pack. Uh, that's his man crush. Yeah. On the, on the topic of this accessorizing of yourself, I've got a... I've got a very strong correlation out of pocket opinion 
Okay. When I say this, it's it's an opinion about something, and I've then correlated and given a conclusion that is extreme. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear the extreme <laughs> opinion. No, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. But I also want to know if you have any strong correlation extreme opinions where you're like, yeah, I know I probably shouldn't think like that, but I don't care. That's my opinion. Because that's, that's how I feel about this. And this is... People who get babies, like <laughs> typically girls, baby girls, ears pierced, are too self-centered to be having children. And it makes me judge their ability to be a good parent. Oh, wow. wow. That is a you big see? call. You see what I mean? It's a really strong big opinion. Call. Really big. strong, cor- like extreme. I mean... But, so, to talk it out... Like my my reasoning is that baby doesn't know their ears are pierced. Like they, it does n- literally nothing for the baby, so it's for you. But you shouldn't be doing things to your baby's body for you. Like that's their body. Like you shouldn't be making those decisions on behalf of them. I hear. You. I mean, Mum got my ears pierced when I was very little as well <laughs> before i yeah. would have realized so she would be in your category of she shouldn't have children therefore you wouldn't be alive <laughs> but um i think if i was to have a girl i probably would have got their ears pierced too i think most of my friends with little girls why why though all have would their you do ears it, pierced. Do, I, it's is it just because so they don't have to go through pain, the pain later? when they're older yeah because they typically forget. tolerate it better and they forget yeah um most yeah most of the little what girls if they don't I want to get their ears pierced when they're older pierced. huh what if they don't want their ears pierced when they're older i typically find that it, i've i've never heard being a girl and knowing many girls never heard anyone say i wish my ears weren't pierced not that but have you ever met any girls who didn't have it pierced ears hazel yeah oh, i should probably shouldn't because it me. wasn't it wasn't done as a child, and when they were old enough to make decisions themselves, they were like, yeah, I don't actually want that. N- I don't uh, think, I don't think you'd have regret friends- as an adult, but I think you can also, as an adult, if given the choice, decide not to do it. Yeah, one of my friends didn't have her ears pierced, but she wanted them pierced, and she, would always, and she wore uh, fake ones. But I think she was a bit scared to get them done. Um... I was thinking about re-getting mine done because I stopped wearing earrings for a long time. Not just not because I didn't want to. Just I used to only wear them when I was going out because my ears stick out, so I'd only wear them with hoops. And then like, however, like if I did my hair, but I wouldn't wear them with my hair back because yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but I was thinking maybe I should get mine redone. But no, I I hear what you're saying. You've got an extreme opinion on that, oh, which is yeah, it's a big call. It's, a, it's, a big it's an extreme. It's an extreme, extreme. one. Mm. Huh. I mean, it's in any, the same boat as yourself? circumcision. The circumcision. Oh well, I don't know. They said circumcision has a health benefit. That's what they. Yeah. Said. But then also people say and that it doesn't just, as well. So uh, <laughs> we chose yeah. to get all three of our boys circumcised, mm. but that's a choice on their body, which is lifelong. I'm sure. I I I I'm sure they're I, glad that you're putting out there. Yeah, I'm. When they listen back to this, I'm glad. I'm glad that they did it. <laughs> they did it at um. We did it at an early age. Because unfortunately, I got it done when I was older, mm-hmm. and I still didn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Right? He was twelve, by the way. Yeah. I think I was older. Thirteen, maybe. Anyways, and uh, yeah, that was an experience. Uh, going into the room and being like fourteen, thirteen, fourteen, and then this female doctor looking at me and saying, "Rhoda." Let's go. And I was like, what What now? What? Like, what do you want me to do? She goes, well, you got to take your pants off. In front of you? You're, you're a woman. <laughs> you're a woman. I think this traumatized you with all things health. <laughs> no, nah, not really. And then, um, so I was like, I, I took my pants down and then I covered my pee-pee with my shirt because I had a long <laughs> shirt. Well, I actually had a really short shirt. So I pulled down in the front and then my bum showed at the back. <laughs> And I started walking to the table and then um, I, I sat on the table. She goes, is it cold? I go, yes, it's cold. Oh. So she felt sorry for me. 
She goes, it's okay, it's okay. It, 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 you just feel a pinch, right? Bang! One needle in the ball sack. And I was like, oh, that's not too bad. And then two more into the shaft. Was it not too bad? <laughs> two more in the shaft. And then bang, bang. And then she was like, okay, it's all good. And then you get this, like, it's like a theatre, right? Because you get this um, cover cover for the half your body. But because it's light, you get to see the shadows. It's like a puppet. It's a sh- shadow. <laughs> and you're like, How oh, you what's, happening you have, like, what's happening over um, there? What's happening over there? What's happening over there? You get what the you sniff as there? well. You get the cover, so you can't see anything. I think it's... Is that sub- subliminal messages? Are you telling me to get the snip? I mean, I've told you directly a few times. So. Uh, I'm trauma. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you a trauma you're story. You're traumatized. I'm telling you a trauma story. <laughs> I can't get it done. I've had I've had my moment in the sun. Um, so in that respect, I, I'm glad that the kids won't experience that. Like remember it. What about the alternative of neither of those experiences? I don't know what I I don't like. I don't. I think. I don't remember what the maintenance was, so <laughs> I don't know how I would help them. Like, I know you got to clean the, the skivvy, but I'm not quite sure what the routine. So from a parental standpoint, being able to teach them, you mean? Like, you wouldn't yeah. know? Yeah, I wouldn't know. Like, I think I've forgotten. <laughs> forgotten what happened. You know, I, I, I'm in the gym. I ripped my shirt off. I've got no sleeves. <laughs> Only know oh, to clean singlets. I'm <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, CJ has entered the podcast. Sounds like um, you know. Okay, I wanna, I wanna, I want you to start us off with this, uh, with your opinion. Nick mm-hmm. Cannon doesn't think yeah. it's a big deal to have seven kids with four women. What do you think? Um, I said CJ. Ooh, yeah, Emma. He said CJ. <laughs> what do you think, Sage? Do you think it's a big deal having f- seven kids with four women? No, no. I don't think it's a big deal. Two are twins. I, what does that matter? I, 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 I don't think it's wise. But like, um, yeah, it's not a big deal. Why? Tell me why. So that's a lot of child support you're paying. Yeah. Besides that, how about the like? Tell me. Tell me. Explore different. Like. Why? Why do you think that? What? Well, because he won't, won't be able to spend as much time with the children as he does with the one that is with the partner. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think it's bad that, or it's you don't see a problem still? I don't see a problem if you, as long as he's able to spend the quality time with the children that they deserve. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But we, we're talking about Nick Cannon. Like, he's working and stuff, but it wouldn't be like doing a nine to five. He's got, like, a lot of income. So he's probably able to fly the children to him on a regular basis to spend all to spend time with them. So if if he can... Oh. So, okay. So you're saying that he has to spend time and he still has to provide for all of them. And then you don't... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you made the kids. You have to look after them. Yeah. As long as you're able to look after them the way, like, and spend quality time with the children, you should be fine. Can I give you a response from uh, the the feed, the Twitter feed? Mm-hmm. Go for it, right? So I'll say the tweet again. Nick Cannon doesn't think it's a big deal that he has seven kids with four women. Squad at S twenty one said, "Of course it's of course it's not." You're not the one who will give birth to those kids, change their diapers, wake up in the middle of the night and feed them. There was a big backlash. Um, okay. Some of the mothers of those children wouldn't be doing that as well. So let, let's be honest. Oh, you reckon they got a nanny? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, are the do mothers you, complaining? Do you see, do you, do you see Mar- Mariah Carey waking up to change a poopy diaper? Did they have kids? They got twins. Yes. Twins. Oh. So Mariah will be paying him. <laughs> Basically, yeah. He's, he's, probably, he's probably getting child support. He's getting child support. I don't think the kids live with him. Uh, yeah, but Are you talking about 
But he has a certain type of lifestyle now that she has to still provide. You can't That's give him. That's not child support. <laughs> you can't give him a yacht and then take it away, brother. Um, uh, uh, alimony. That, that alimony. Alimony. Um. That's when you all the money. I all the money. Yeah. Look. All the I money. Mean, <laughs> This is the thing you're talking about uh, a celebrity in his case. Um, you're in a real game stance. You're like when you're in a huddle, in a basketball huddle. You are you are prep for yeah. Go, go on. Uh, She's in a his fight normal mode. life, I look. I get how it could happen because people might not be for each other, but the mothers of those children are going to be bearing the brunt. And the dad is going to be swanning in basically probably whenever he wants. If it doesn't suit his schedule, he's not able to see those kids maybe. Yes, he'd probably have to pay child support, but the mum is going to be the main uh, looker if... after her <laughs> of those children. Oh, um, It's just sad. Obviously, it's not ideal. Obviously, you don't know everyone's situations. Can yeah. you read that um, that lady lady's tweet? Uh, Reese reels with Rihannot. Hmm? It can't be a big deal because he's he thinks parenting equals finance, which he has. It also can't be a big deal to him because he's got he isn't going to actively parent all seven or wake up at midnight to change diapers, breastfeed, deal with seven babies who wouldn't sleep throughout the night. Now, clearly, those seven babies aren't under one household, but the exactly. but the mum is still going to be doing everything day in day out. All the little little no, little little things. Than any. If she's rich, yeah, but if she's like in his case, yes, but in general and not and not all celebs have nannies. Some some like yes, they so, probably do, but they're not there 24/7. Yeah. Like some okay, are. Okay, um who are, who are these lady he, ladies he's impregnated? I don't know. Um you want to look it up? Let's look it up. So on on that on that sort of line of thought, and I'm not absolving him of responsibility in any way shape or form, but at what point do we put personal responsibility on the mother of the seventh child to know that she's having sex unprotected with Chris, with Nick Cannon, who has six other children with multiple women? He's, very f- He's a very fertile man. <laughs> like, I feel like at that point, that's kind of on her as much as it's on him. And is he, is he not with any of them? Uh, I don't think not so. Not sure. I don't, I, it was just funny because at the same time, two different maternity pictures came out. It was like one came out with him and one woman. And then like, I think it was it within days or something. Then another one came out with him with another woman. It was just like, what is going on? Oh. There was, wait, wait, but wait. Yeah. When did this happen? This is this year. Oh, this year? Wow. If I remember rightly. I don't know. I've kind of lost sense of time in the past couple of years, but I think it was this year. <laughs> I think... So, to, to, to be honest, the last, last few months, we've also lost the sense of time. I think... So, Brittany <laughs> Bell is... Uh, so, wait. So, Mariah Carey, who he was married to, they've got the twins, Monroe and Moroccan. Uh, okay. Brittany Bell, his then-girlfriend, is the mother of Golden Sagon. And powerful queen. What the? What? Abby Della Rosa is his current partner, mum of twins. Oh, he's got two sets Man, of twins. He's got twin sperms. So he's got. So, so, so that's he? four, he's got... five, six. Yeah, that's oh, only seven? six. Where's, Where's the seven? The seven? Oh. I think the seventh one's uh, must be hidden, because there's only three. The three names only keep coming back up. There's no. The other one doesn't want to be known. I think. Okay, wasn't there twins, twins, and three? Wait, go down. From one of them? Twins, no, twins. I think it was twins, two, and twins, right? That's what you said. Uh, yeah. I thought you said six. three names. No, six. In the middle. I think there was a middle name you gave. Two, yeah. Powerful yeah. queen or oh. something. Oh, okay, I thought it was... I, Sagon no, was the nickname. All right. <laughs> wow, Mariah Carey's 52 years old. Not bad. Um, Yeah, and... Have you finished that one? Like, 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 like who, do any of you guys think it's a big deal? Ernie, do you think it's a big deal? Big, big is a very contextual word. I don't think it's a big deal in my life. Yeah, but I think it's generally a big deal if you do that because mm. the 
it's it's less to me about the fact that the mother has to do a lot of work and you're not doing work. It's more about the children to be raised as a well-rounded person. It's better to have two parents Both. Yeah. than one. If you if you can provide those circumstances, you should provide those circumstances. And I say that because if if one of the parents dies or something, of course, like that's just that's an unfortunate situation. But if you're both there, healthy and able to, if you've had the kid, you should be there to raise the kid. And yeah, if, but he, I don't. He's being he's being responsible for it, isn't he? For them all but financially, you, can't, like, you 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 can't in terms of time. Like time's way more important than money when it comes to raising mm-hmm. a kid. And the child yeah, might think that the other children are more important than them, or whatever it is, and it just affects them lifelong. Yeah, but you, you can't stay in a negative relationship. No, of course children. not. But that's not because that's not that, that, with, that is also unhealthy for them. But that's nothing that to do with parenting. Being in a negative relationship, being in a, being being in a relationship that's not for you, does not impact your ability to parent. But. Having exactly. several kids with several other women does impact your ability to parent. Like they're two maybe very they all different live, choices. Maybe they, maybe they all live near each other <laughs> in a big compound, <laughs> and, and he's able to pick them up as a group. Well, I, I, I see. Uh, like I always hear this argument, right? But, um, and I, I hear this side argument of saying that humans aren't supposed to be. We're, we're the only animals that get forced into. Being monogamous, don't it? Monogamous. 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 But like, I don't know if We're it's not in the our, only. I know, yeah. but like, I don't, know, I don't know if it's in our DNA for humans to be monogamous. I think it's a re- relatively new, modern thing for monogamy. What? Monogamy. Yeah. Da, 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 da. What do you mean? What, Mon- do, you mean? what do you mean? What do you mean? Monogamous. It, it, monogamy is a relatively modern. It is lifestyle choice. But, but so yeah. is the family dynamic. And yeah. what I mean by that is a kid, whether there was monogamy or not, a kid was being raised by a community. Yes, right. this is but true. But now we don't do that. No. So even the idea of monogamy being new is true, but being raised by one person is, is new. way more new than monogamy. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like that's a because, very new thing. Because then you'd always have like a tribe or, or like... A, mm. a, it takes a community to a raise community. a child. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that's where so, like so I, you could you could have multiple because you'd have helpers. It was it came about basically with the with like churches. Yeah. Um. What do you mean? Monogamy, monogamous relationships. Did someone get jealous? <laughs> as far as I know, I think it was um, it was basically uh. Oh, I'd have to look into the timeline again, but it, it it's fairly modern in terms of hum, hum, like how long we've been around. Then, I'm talking like then quite at what modern. point? At what point did um like that those emotions of jealousy and hatred and that like and not not being able to accept your partner seeing seeing with another girl? When did that come in then? Is that well, fairly just, new as well? It's generational. So if you're, if that's all you've known, that's all your parents have known, that's what their parents have known. That's, do you know what I mean? No, I'm talking about that period where before monogamy. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like when you say, when you say uh, uh, relatively new, mm. compared to what? Because like I don't in know. terms of modern humans, yeah. so the last 12,000 years, it's not relatively new. It's right quite well established yeah it has been for a long time it's relatively new if you compare us to pre modern humans like if you're just talking homo sapiens in general but then we're very different creatures oh so you're saying when we uh as soon as we started being civilized that's when the monogamy came into play came into I don't. I don't know if it goes all the way back the twelve thousand years, but I know for for example, it's it predates the modern timeline, like um, tribes AD. and stuff. It it is in it. You know, like our timeline, we're in two thousand twenty one AD. Yeah, like it predates that. Yeah. So, so you're saying in, in BC, tribes, it was like, always you'd always have a, a soulmate that that they would be. I'm just thinking of like like if you look at religious scriptures and stuff, like it's right. It's beyond. <sighs> It's pre-Jesus, like it's it's yeah, beyond yeah. that, which 
in the life in the in the time span of twelve thousand years. If you're talking more than two thousand years, it's quite a significant chunk. I don't know how far back that goes, but it's. it's quite I thought it was a lot less, but I might be wrong. Because I, I'd like, uh, I, you know, how that um, that invention of lying by uh, Ricky Gervais, like you know, have yeah, you ever watched yeah. that movie? So brilliant film. Yeah, so that period where like the first person, like let's say they were just having sex with a lot of people, right? And then there was a period, and then someone all of a sudden felt an emotion, is like, hang on a sec, that's my man, and then all of a sudden, oh, that man said, that's my woman. And then all this, like, oh, me and you have to be together. That moment. I'm talking about that initial yeah. moment. It's like... I get, what, I get what you mean. I think, but I think, yeah, that's, I think that's generally part of the evolution of human, isn't it? Like, yeah, these, these emotions even of being a part of our, um, being a part of our being, being a part of who we are. Because that's where you would say, like, animals don't have those emotions. That's why then they don't have the systems that we have. Like, a yeah. lot of our systems are built around the emotions that we feel. Yeah, that's crazy, eh? Yeah, that's a, but yeah, there would have been there would have been jealousy that was felt for the first time ever. First time, what's his like, feeling? Like in the invention of lying. But imagine that, like he goes, "What's his feeling?" He sees a um a bowl of jellies. He goes, "That's jelly, lust." Because <laughs> <laughs> she she picked it up and she ate it, and she was like, "That's jelly, us. That's jelly." <laughs> Delicious jelly. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I think the dad jokes are getting worse. <laughs> Can't get worse, mate. Can't get worse. Um, I think they have. <laughs> that was interesting. That is actually an interesting um, conversation. Maybe someone out there can tell us. Maybe. Yeah. Do you do you know? Are you familiar with someone, or have you ever experienced someone who? tells the same stories over and over again i think yeah me i might do that me (laughs) i think i might tell the same stories and it's not i feel like i'm I'm the person because i've told this story before um because i asked this question before i feel like i'm telling the same anyway um (laughs) so i'm going to send you something in whatsapp for you to take a look at i just thought this was quite funny um and i only tell the same story because i i have very my memory is affected by my fibromyalgia and i think that i for- i really do forget it's who affected I've told more a story. it was affected more right but you always had bad memory okay i'll give you that what is fibromyalgia fibromyalgia and if you can remember that if you can remember that word <laughs> you have a pretty good memory <laughs> oh man i can't even read it this is really tiny so this is a twitter thread where Someone said, anyone know Jeremy Clarkson's A-level results? Because the A-level results have just come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy Clarkson tweeted, if the teachers didn't give you the A-level results you were hoping for, don't worry. I got a C and two U's and I've ended up happy with loads of friends in a Bentley. (laughs) Nice. And then there's there's a tweet from August 2020 from Jeremy Clarkson. A-level results, not great. Don't worry. I got a C in two U's and I'm currently building a large house with far-reaching views of Cotswolds. <laughs> then there's a tweet from August 2019. A-level results, a bit rubbish. Don't worry. I got a C in two U's and I've rented this place for the summer with a nice picture of a big house. <laughs> and basically, this is a thread of a tweet from Jeremy Clarkson every August telling people that he got a C in two U's and how <laughs> well off he is. <laughs> Uh, it's, I like it's become that a bit of a running, It's become a bit of a running joke Running joke They're, they're the jokes but, but is he doing it as a joke? Yeah. yeah I'd say so Like the first one The first one you won't see it as a joke But when you're When you're eight years in It's yeah. a joke <laughs> It's a joke that, What's that? 14th of August 14 If If your A-level results Aren't joyous Take comfort From the fact I got a I got a C And two U's and I have a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> so someone do it in um, Jeremy Clarkson's voice. Well, uh, what the? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <Nope>. Batman. <laughs> no. No. That was Batman with a cough. Let me continue. No, I just said my first word. Error. Error. Is Jeremy a heavy, heavy, heavy smoker? You don't know Jeremy Clarkson? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, is he a heavy, heavy, heavy smoker? Oh, yeah. Recently? yeah, Emma. Emma's rendition. Big... Because 
according to Emma, he is. <laughs> if you'd have let me finish, you'd have seen. Oh. Can we? That well, that's that's a wrap. <laughs> My only message is, if the worst end you know, ever. If you're in a situation <laughs> where know. you've received some news and you're worrying, Sorry. don't worry, because I got a C in two U's, and <laughs> I'm currently on this podcast, so life turned out pretty great. Uh, that is another so episode. So of the B-Side Word Podcast done for another week done and dusted I hope you guys have a lovely week I'm Devin signing off with Emma CJ and Alexander ciao bye 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 what do you want to say Siege? <laughs> I forgot oh Jesus it well, like can I, the paper. what I was going to say before I said that's a wrap was can we all play a game of um, Gartic Phone no, it's, and then uh, we can... Alexander's headphones are going off that's oh. why I ended it. Okay.